Hi folks, I'm James Garbett, and today I want to share with you our newest team member, Monica Harms, right beside me. We're going to get to know a little bit about her, because you already know lots about me. So, I want to give you a little bit of Monica's background. She is a, well, she was a soccer player in college at uh, North Texas University. University of North Texas. <laughs> University of North Texas. I asked her where she grew up, and that question got very interesting. So we're, you know, just to give you an idea, born in Virginia, stint in California, then Boston, Germany, Boston, California, Boston, California. I, Something, yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of movement. Um, we're going to have to attach a chart that kind of outlines her life history, but very world-traveled. Moved to Toronto in 2008 for three years, then back to LA, then Texas, then... <laughs> Then I believe you made, uh, well, you had your first experience in Vancouver in 2011 in False Creek of Vancouver, then left for California again, and then became a resident of Canada in 2016 and made Port Moody your home. Yes. Okay. So that, <laughs> did that, it. <laughs> that, was, that was not accurate, but... It was close. It was close. Needless to say, very world traveled uh, and much more experience than me going from Burnaby to New West. Uh, anyway... Um, She's a mother, a wife, has a daughter that's nine years old, and a dog. Donna. Uh, dog named Donna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her past work experience before real estate, she had nine years in media and um, in advertising. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So she, Monica joined our team this year. We're very excited to have her, and the goal for this, this video is for you to get to know her a little bit. So Monica, first thing I want to address is your world travels. You have lived in a lot of places. You have much wider perspective of this world than I. How does that translate to your life now in real estate? Um, I think having traveled to so many places, meeting so many new people, um, it's given me a lot of experience in a short amount of time. So, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, but I feel like I have the experience of, of somebody who's traveled the world and they're in their eighties and they're telling their grandkids about all the places they've been. I feel like I already have that. And just to be clear, she couldn't remember how many times she lived in different <laughs> places and how long. It's true. I just black it out. I just black it out. So safe to say you're good with change. Yeah. And uh, you've had to remake a lot of friends in life, I would imagine, growing up. I would say I, yeah. I still have all of the friends, yeah. um, but I do have to meet new people constantly, and, yeah. and, I, and I love it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Nine years in media, advertising, uh, prior to real estate. What did you learn from that? How has that translated to what you do today? Uh, in media, it's really fast-paced and um, deadlines. A lot of people... Um, with advertising, especially small businesses, it is the most important thing in their business. So having to be able to be honest in our relationships and have open communication and also work under immense pressure is something that I've carried into real estate. And it's been a really seamless transition because I, if anything, I feel like it's a little bit uh, slower of a business <laughs> and, and, I, and I find it to be really comfortable. <laughs> Fair enough. So yeah. you're dealing with small businesses that need their advertising to work, yeah. that are under a bit of pressure, different mm -hmm. personalities. So you have dealt with, I imagine, a wide range of people with a wide range of demands and expectations? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everybody's business is the most important thing in their world. And when you're dealing with 10 people who their most important thing in their world is mm -hmm. this, you have to treat each situation Cool. Like yeah. you're in their shoes. Yeah. yeah. Well, buying a house is important. It's it super Trans important. <laughs> uh, yeah. Daughter, nine year old daughter, and a dog yeah. living in Port Moody. Yeah. And we uh, love it. family. Share a little bit about your family. Um, okay, we live in Port Moody. Uh, we chose Port Moody for, for many reasons, but mostly because it's so beautiful and uh, we love the community there. It's small. Um, I feel like I know everybody. When I leave my house and I'm in my car, if I look over, I sort of like see somebody that I know that might be my daughter dances with their kid or they go to school together. I run into them at the grocery store. It's very much a small <laughs> town vibe and I love that. And um, there's a lot to do. There's so look, rivers and lakes and everything. And where's your go-to spot with the dog? For sure, Bunsen Lake. Bunsen Lake. For okay. sure, the dog. How beach. many running clubs are you in right now? Oh my god, no running clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Never a running club. That's that's way too much commitment. But I do really like um, hiking. We do the crunch constantly yeah. with my friends, cool. and and we yeah we take advantage of Bert Flynn and and nice. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Poor Moody. <laughs> all right. Um, the life experiences that you've had from moving from media from the 
those life experiences evolving your personality to how it is today how do you feel that's developed you as a realtor what do you feel your strengths are what do you feel what do you want to share from that world traveling and media life background um i think the biggest translation from my past career to now is um that i can think so many steps ahead um often i my brain already starts thinking of all the potential outcomes of different situations so i feel very prepared anytime anything comes up i know a lot of time for my clients especially even um, a client that i'm working with right now um, they just have so many questions all of the time and i'm really grateful that i've had this experience so that as soon as they have the question i have the answer as soon as they have a little bit of a freak out i have the happy solution that makes them relax so i i love that i'm able to do that for my clients and i really um, I do it sort of as second nature. It's not something that I sort of have to plan out. It's just well, there. <laughs> in the relatively short time that I've known you, you come across as a cool cat <laughs> that can deal with the different ups and downs of people's stress levels and personalities. <laughs> would you say that's pretty accurate? Yeah, I'd yeah. say that's accurate. Sometimes it's super irritating to my husband because he has his little freak outs and he wants me to freak out with him. I don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, similar in my household. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I guess the one thing that I will mention, and, and again, newest member of the team, new relationship relatively, uh, aside from being a cool cat, I see you as being a doer. You know, I've, uh, when you say something, you do it. And uh, that's the sense I get from you so far. Is that yeah. accurate to say? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I like to plan my tasks and follow through with them. Yeah. I don't ever have any kind of things left out in the universe that I started doing. I'm not like, I don't have little projects sitting around everywhere. They're completed projects. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, part of the hope of this uh, video is so that anyone watching and looking for a realtor, you know, will consider you potentially. But I, I want you to share with us in your real estate career, I don't know, one big success story or something that was a big win for you, a big memorable moment, a TSN turning point, per se, <laughs> uh, whatever you want it to be. Um, I think actually this last summer was a big, there was a big win for me. I was um, working on a project listing and it is a listing that at least, I don't know, four realtors had worked on before. And, and when I took it on, I knew that it was going to be a project. The owner knew that it was going to be a project for me. And we both agreed that this was going to be difficult. And I felt really comfortable taking it on. I had other listings and clients that were all pretty under control. So I felt like if I had one project, it was fine. I could do it. So I took this project on. Um, it was difficult right out of the gate. This, this property was riddled with issues. And, and um, it had offers fall through in the past. And I was sort of preparing myself for, for how that was going to go with me. And through a lot of work, in about four weeks, we had a really great offer come in. Um, everyone was happy on both sides. So I felt, I, at that point, I thought that that was the win of this, of this project. I thought that that was the win. I was excited. So I had taken on actually another project listing at that point um, that somebody else had listed for two years. Just to clarify, project listing, are you saying project in a way it's a fixer upper house? Is that Fixer what? upper. Yeah. Um, or, the price point was like the sellers just yeah. needed a certain price point. Single family dwelling, fixer upper. Detached home, fixer upper yeah. in Poco. Okay. Yeah. And the other one was a fixer upper Maple Ridge. So, you know, quite a bit of distance apart from each other. Yeah. And But I felt comfortable taking on the Poco listing because I thought I had this other one wrapped up <laughs> so um the ink had barely dried on one listing contract and then the offer fell through on the maple ridge project which i should have seen coming because it had happened so many times before um it fell through and instead of freaking out i just i remember sitting in my office thinking how am i going to fix this and i printed up a million flyers and i put on my running shoes and i went out to maple ridge and i just knocked on every door in the entire neighborhood handed them the listing and said, do you know anybody that wants to move to this area? Do you know anyone that wants a reno project? Do you like, and I knocked on every door. I had to talk to everyone in the neighborhood and, um, and then the same for the Poco house. I was like, I'm not letting this happen again. I printed my flyers. I went straight back to Poco, knocked on all the doors in the neighborhood. And, and then the clock was just ticking and I only had those listings for three months and I was less than a week away from the Maple Ridge, Maple Ridge listing 
expiring on me. <laughs> and I finally got that, that offer that we needed. Um, they closed it within a few days. It just went back and forth a few times. It closed, and then within 24 hours, the Poco house closed. Mm-hmm. And both of those were from my relentless door knocking (laughs) and like holding open houses until the last minute and all of it all happened all at once and I remember the dust settling on both of those deals closing and the owner of the Poco house just coming to me being like we really we didn't want to tell you this because we didn't want to put too much pressure on you but we were already talking about pulling the listing off early we just don't want to deal with it anymore we were going to move on and they were like we really didn't think that you could do it so it was like it was a really awesome moment for me I remember going home and being like I'm taking a break I'm going on vacation for a week <laughs> lost like 10 pounds from door knocking <laughs> your cardio. Yeah. Yeah. well I so just to kind of clarify a couple things we're talking about two houses that you took on as listings last spring summer summer yeah in the Maple Ridge one I think you left out one detail if I remember correctly it was previously listed by four realtors, four realtors. and you <laughs> took it on as the fifth realtor to take on this challenging listing that I assume was unsellable per se I had a realtor call yeah. me and say what are you thinking this house is unsellable she's okay. like you will never sell this home and I trusted her because she was a really good realtor and I was like oh my god if she's telling me this <laughs> yeah. is unsellable what have, what have I gotten myself into and, yeah. and from the story of door knocking I, I see the commitment in you to get it done you have this three month contract you're down to the final week yeah. you're seeing the clock tick and on day four it magically happens yeah, yeah. <laughs> Day four. Yeah. Uh, the fourth four, day. Four, four days left. Yeah. yeah. And then the Poco one falls right after. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. I couldn't, I honestly, I thought. And those families needed to sell, I assume? They needed yeah. to sell. And, and I felt really responsible for both families. Um, I have like built yeah. a relationship with both of those families. And I just, both of them were so happy. Yeah. Like how happy they were at the end of that time frame was yeah. pretty much set me up for the rest of my career. Like I will always go all the way through because I can see what that can get you. You can actually do it if you just don't give up. You know, a lot of people will give up two weeks before it expires or a week before it expires. Put minimal effort in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, um, I mean, for me, I love that. I mean, the one thing I just want to say is if you're not a real team, you don't understand this, but when we take on a listing, we're taking on people's lives and responsibilities. And uh, some of us care a lot. And if a family needs to sell, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It, it leads, for you, it leads to door knocking every house in the yeah. street, which is great, which is great. So I get from that, uh, you know, if we're speaking to sellers, I sense that you have a high level of commitment, but it, what what message would you want to leave to potential sellers or pe- people thinking of hiring a realtor as a seller? What, what message do you want to leave as your commitment to sellers you take on, your commitment to the listings you take on? Well, I'm relentless. <laughs> I'm relentless. Yeah. And I think that sometimes the sellers know that before the listing even gets started because mm-hmm. that's how I got their listing was being relentless. And um, and I do I do take it personally if if the listing can't sell. And I know that we can't see into the future and things don't always work out mm-hmm. perfectly and there's going to be times when they need to expire and they need to get relisted and that's just part of our business. But if that's the case, if it if it gets to that with me, it's not because I didn't turn over every single rock. <laughs> I turned over every rock. I did all the things. There was no things left mm. to do. And and then I can feel confident that relisting is what needs to happen. Cool. You know? yeah. Well, sellers, if you want a relentless realtor, <laughs> this is one. Hold her accountable. She's yeah. got to deliver on that, too. Um, Buyers, you know, obviously buyers half the equation. Any uh, message? Like, how do you feel that your approach, your experiences? What do you want to share about how you? I think buyers? it's just exactly the same. I think it's the same as the listings. I think, um, you know, there there are buyers out there that um, they're very specific. They're specific in what they need. They're specific in how much they can spend. They're specific in what they're willing to deal with as far as home maintenance or or things like that. And. And sometimes we have to get creative as um, as realtors for buyers. You know, it's more than just kind of typing in to search their credentials and seeing what pops up and sending them a list. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot more to it. And um, and I I love that challenge. Awesome. <laughs> I love to find yeah. that special creative property that no one's showed them before. It's rewarding when you align them into a spot that you yes, excited about. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well. From as half of the original G and D team, we're so happy to have you. I want you. Let's do some little forward thinking for a moment. Ten years from now, I Google search your name. Uh, what or what do you want your rep, 
what do you want to be known for in real estate 10 years? What is your goals with this career? Um, well, I wouldn't be in it if I just didn't want to say, oh, I just want to be the best. But I think the best for me is, you know, anybody in my area of expertise, anybody in the Tri-Cities, anybody in Port Moody especially, if they have a question about real estate or if they... Um, they need to talk to somebody they trust that I'm the person that they come to. I, I'd like for a stranger to have a question about real estate and then them to say, you know who's going to know the answer? Monica Harms. You know, so, that. So are you, do you see yourself staying in Port Moody? Yes. So yeah. would it be safe to say you want to be the Port Moody, Tri-Cities, oh, for sure. dominant mega agent? 100%. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, I want to be the person yeah. that people go to with any questions, not just to sell or buy homes, yeah. but if they have a burning real estate question and they need to know something that's going on in the market, that, that they feel confident that I'm the person that has the best answer yeah. for it. You're going to have an incredible cardio if you're door knocking yes. for 20... I'm, I'm hoping to find some better <laughs> ways to do it, but for yeah. those homes, that yeah. was the best I could do. <laughs> well, I uh, I get the sense of a big commitment and work ethic and drive uh, yeah. when I hear all this stuff. So um, I hope you've appreciated this. Monica, do you want to leave anyone with any other message, anything else to know about you? I mean, the hope of this is that they get to know you. Um, I think just... I'm excited uh, to join the GND team. I'm I'm really um, grateful and and I feel lucky to be here. Um, I think that you know for people out there that are thinking about getting into real estate or people out there that are thinking about selling their real estate, um, you know all of the experience that I do have and all the places that I've moved have not always gone perfectly. <laughs> I think right now I'm in a, a really good groove and I, I know how to take care of a lot of things, but that's because so much hilarious nonsense has happened in all of the time that's built me up to be yeah. where I am today. So I don't want everyone to think that things have gone perfectly. <laughs> um, <laughs> things have gone hilarious, um, ridiculous, all the stupid nonsense yeah. that could have happened has happened, which is why, like you said, oh, Monica, you're a cool cat. Well, it's because it's because of all the nonsense that happened, and I feel very grateful for all those experiences. So you don't dwell on failure; you no. just see it as a speed bump and keep pushing. Yeah, 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 for sure. Folks, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Monica Harms. I'm James Garbett. That is all.